Okay guys, I'm not gonna go in the full um, bow setup. Um, Cause there's a lot of guys out there that are putting out how to set up your bow videos and they're a lot more reputable than I am. So these are just little things that I do um, that might be different, or a different way of doing it and some people explain. Um, so right now I'm running into an issue. I'm setting up my vector 35 for hunting and uh, I'm running into the problem with there being a space between the riser and the rest here and between the tech riser and the back of the rest. So there's nothing really keeping that rest from like pitching under like extreme conditions. So if I just pulled the crap out of this down cord, like I could make this rest pitch up like this. Or, you know, if I hit it, something hit it from the bottom, it could make it pitch up like this and totally lose my center shot. So all I did was fold a piece of duct tape a bunch of times to where it'll fit in between the tech riser and the back of that rest pretty tight. Might actually need to add some more layers to get it to fit real snug. But just basically making a spacer so where that rest won't pitch. Um, just basically making a spacer to where that rest won't pitch either way. <clears throat> just kind of something I do. Um, but now that I'm looking at it, I'm probably going to have to put it in between the shelf and the rest itself because putting it through the back would impede me being able to center shot it. So if I need to move this screw over and push it like that, my little spacer would come out with it. So I'm just gonna have to force it between the back of the riser and the front of the rest shelf um, to kind of get that that space knocked out. But if it's tighter through there anyway, so it was a better idea. But that's just something kind of a backwoods you know homegrown I guess method of doing a spacer to kind of keep your rest from pitching because I do think it is important to have two points of contact on your rest you know like obviously the the burner bolt but also either your rest shelf snugged up against your bow shelf or on the back of the tech riser or just wherever as long as it doesn't impede your windage movement um, but just uh, there needs to be two points of contact just so that rest can't get hit and pitch one way or the other um, so yeah, just kind of something I did there. Figured I'd show you guys. All right. So the next thing I do is I'll put a level, put these Hoyts in the curved shelf. It's kind of hard to, um, it's kind of hard to get a level on the shelf. So I just find a flat spot. So that seemed like a pretty flat spot on the riser. You know, behind the uh, roller guard seemed like a pretty flat spot um, on the on the uh, the string stop rod is pretty straight. So I checked the level three different places. The bow sitting level. So from there, I will put my T square on there, and I always start at zero as a starting point, and we'll see where we go from there. So I throw the level onto my T square arrow, find the zero. And uh, that's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to tie my knocking points above and below and uh, get a starting point there. And hopefully uh, get the rest tied down. And, uh, sight from there. Okay, so I just actually brought up a fair point to myself. Um, I'm going to be shooting these Easton Hex arrows um, this year. And uh, they come standard with a uh, Easton H knock. Um, and I almost did my knock point spacing for a standard H knock, but I actually shoot knock out lighted knocks. So I needed to actually make the spacing for my lighted knock because that's what I'm going to actually hunt with and actually shoot, not the H knock. And this H knock is quite a bit wider.
than the uh, knockout knock. So I'm glad I caught that to make my spacing right. So that's something to think about guys, is if you're tying in knocking points, make sure you're actually tying them in for the knock that you plan on shooting and not the knock that comes on the arrow necessarily if that's not the knock you're gonna shoot. Okay, so I like to set my arrows up to where I have just a little bit of play in my knocking point, not much at all, but I still don't want it to pinch. So I have just a little bit of play and that's actually, the amount of play is actually dictated usually by the axle to axle length of the bow. Because this one's a 35, I only have a 29 inch draw length. There really isn't going to be that much pinch on it. Okay, so I start my center shot by lining up the string in the cam track. So that's the, the cam track there. So I put my string right on both sides of the cam track and then run the string up in the same perspective, which is impossible to do in the camera, but it should split the dead center of your rest. So eyeballing it, Without the camera, it does that. It's money. Because obviously that cam's gonna come back straight. Okay, so I tied my D-loop on. Um, if you don't know how to tie a D-loop, there's a million videos on the internet showing you how to do that. Um, so I basically have my knocking points set and my D-loop tied. So now I'm gonna check it through paper real quick just to see how everything ended up squaring out. Um, see if there's any adjustments I need to make. That is pretty much perfect bullet hole, so we can leave that there. Um, that was my first shot, which is also perfect bullet hole. So I'm liking the knocking point and the rest level. Good start.